So we're back here in the trenches, right? I'm gonna call this guy right now. I got I got a whole bunch of stuff going on lately, but welcome back to another vlog, right? Glorious day, glorious day. So um, give you guys a quick peek. I don't have a peek of this, but if the computer will zoom in right here, I have here a beautiful, beautiful, like gorgeous, gorgeous trailer park. Um, looks like it has probably about 10 trailers. I've been hunting this guy for a long time. And today, because I am tired of trying to skip trace him, I'm tired of mailing him. I want to try to see if I can get a hold of him. Now, this guy might be really, really old. Um, I got a couple of birth dates for him. He's going to be either 68 or 95. I'm thinking that he's going to be probably 68, 67 around that area um, because I think he, well, his name is, I'm not going to share his name, but he's a junior and his father is a senior. So I'm wondering like, where is he at? So I got two guys here. I'm going to try to see this guy definitely ain't it, but I'm going to call this guy on air. See if I get something out of it. If I don't, you know, so be it. If I do, good to go. Um, I like trailer parks. I like calling trailer parks. I like buying trailer parks. Trailers are awesome. I don't care what anybody says. You say trailers aren't real investing. Let me tell you something. I've made my best money from trailers. And especially when I get them cheap. So I'm gonna call this guy. I'm using air call, by the way, I'm not power dialing. This is gonna be a hand dial, um, really good data. Try to see if we could, uh, I'm, I'm gonna use his two best numbers that I currently have. Let me see some. This is deep prospecting, by the way, this guy is not dead. I got his address from Bin Verified, skip traced him in Bell's Link. Um, Cost me a dollar to skip trace him. So this gives me really, really, really good data. And if I still can't find him, I'm gonna find his kids. All right, here's the dial. That number is disconnected. All right. So let's go on to the next one. The number is invalid. All right, so I got a couple numbers out of the way. See if I can get, I think it's the one, no, it's not the one. So this trailer park is vacant. All the trailers are falling apart, but somebody's mowing the grass. Hello? They hung up on me. I'm calling back. Family in North Carolina. Don't even know anybody. Okay? Hello? Why do you keep hanging up on me, lady? She keeps hanging up on me.
Hi, my name is Dan. Um, I, I have no idea whether I have the right or wrong number, but I'm looking for uh, Thomas Barker. If Even if this isn't the right number, if you could please call me or text me, my number is... Thank you. So I'm also gonna text this, text this lady. I'm also gonna add her, because I want her to contact me back. If not, I'm gonna nag the crap out of her. So this property is vacant. It's been vacant for a long time. It's been vacant for a long time. I've been hunting them for a while. I've skip traced them. I've called them. No, uh, no contact so far. It is what it is. This is the life, guys. If you, if you guys don't know already, this is this is my my daily activities. While you guys are out scouring the world, looking, you know, pulling lists and all that stuff. I'm calling the vacant trailer park until somebody picks up and tells me, uh, you know, to go somewhere. But this guy, I have a feeling he is really hard to find. I've skip traced him before through Bell's Link. Um, I'm going to see if, who's that number I call? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see. I also skip traced him in, uh, what's it called? A deal machine. I'm gonna, I have a different set of numbers here that I'm gonna try. It's always good to use two good sources. Deal Machine, I haven't had any really real luck because I don't really skip trace through them, but you know, we're gonna try our luck today. But let me see here. Hello? Hi, um, I'm not sure if I have the right number or not, but I'm looking for Thomas Barker. Uh, this is Carol. Is it about the bump landing? Uh, no, ma'am. I'm, I'm reaching out about a, a trailer park that he owns. Okay, it's not for sale. Okay, do you guys think that might change anytime in the future? I don't know. Let me give you this. No, I don't know his number. I don't know his wife's number. Why not? Yeah, I know his wife's number. Okay, whenever you're ready. I don't have problems. Okay. Uh, I know his wife's number. I don't call her much sister. Okay, that's totally understandable. I'll see if I can find Thomas's uh, number. Okay, I'll see if I can find Thomas's number. Okay, I'll see if I can find Thomas's number. Okay, I'll see if I can find Thomas's number. This is why you call the family. This is his wife's sister. Off a deal machine. This is legit, like, right directly from the app. Thomas's number. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. I really do greatly appreciate it. Yeah, I'm your sister-in-law. You have a great day. You too, ma'am. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, so this is... Like I, what I love about this video, this is pure uncut, okay? Like you might see some editing just cause I, got, I don't want you guys to hear the phone numbers that I'm getting or the addresses that I'm getting. But this is real deal. Like you think that you're gonna call the, the owner and get his number, you're not. So this phone number, neither his wife nor his phone number itself, neither of them are here. Not one. These are old phone numbers. I know because they, these phone numbers have dates and these predate 2017. Let me see if the second. Oh, wow. So on the second skip trace on this, because there's two addresses here. The second uh, Harold that I found or Thomas, I should say, I got his number here. Uh, the number that she gave me and his wife's number is on the second one. So clearly there's two data sets for this guy, two different birthdays, two different names. I even have a different social security number for him. Uh, yeah, I have socials too. Um, but what it looks like is that the one that I'm looking at is for his father and the one that I have for him is right here and this is his number. So now I got his wife and um, her husband. So I'm gonna call him right now and I pray, pray that this guy tells me that this place is for sale and he's been trying to get rid of it. Cause it's empty, the whole trailer park is empty.
So this is like my dream come true right here. And it's funny because I wasn't gonna call this second list because none of his addresses pop up in here. But I think he lives in Indiana now, so he's he's an absentee owner. So let's check it out. Wish me luck. Hey Thomas, how you doing, bud? Good, you. Hey, uh, my name's Dan. Uh, I'm reaching out about that. Yeah. Hey, boss. I was just wondering if you had any plans for that place. Well, my son has got it, and uh, right now he's been down his back. He's been able to do much down there, so he's got it, and uh, he said that he's going to do something with it. I can refer you to him and. Let you talk to him and see, you know, if you're interested, uh, would you want to make an offer on it? Absolutely. I, I just wanted to reach out. I, I drove by it the other day and I saw it was empty, so I figured I'd just give a call because it, it really is a pretty park. Yeah. It's got to be uh, fixed up and all. It's still, but we get, it had 21 trailers in it when we first bought it. And with a bunch that was bad, we was going to try to fix the ones that was left down there. But uh, I don't know. You, no, we not, we're talking later about something to just pull them out, maybe make it concrete spot, and let people pull trailers in or something like that. So I have got, I don't know right now what my son's going to do with it. If you want to talk to him, I'll give you a number. You can call him and leave a message with him or talk to him, whatever. Absolutely. All right. It's, uh, His name is Chris. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Thomas. Uh, give me a few minutes. Let me call him first and talk to him. So you expect him to call probably come in. Okay, sounds good. All right, thank you. Bye. You're welcome. So I want you guys to take some notes from that call. I am no pro by by no means. All right. So um, most of you guys think that uh, you know, like these conversations are going to go perfect. So I could have just let it die right he was like oh i'll talk to my son about it and he asked me if i wanted to make an offer on it and what was what was the thing that i said and this is true by the way this is no bs i rode by it i saw it was empty it's a really nice park i was wondering if you had any plans right he told me straight up that it's not in his control anymore his son's control and his son hasn't been go been able to go down there and actually do something with it so what this could turn into is this could, this could be a great wholesale deal. But man, do you think I want to wholesale a park with almost 20 spaces in it? No way. So give you a little backstory real quick while I uh, give him some time to talk to his son. I, uh, in the area that I, I uh, wholesale in, they're not making any new trailer parks. I don't think anywhere in this country there's not a lot of places that are creating new parks. So if you have a city that's grown to a certain amount of people, typically in those areas, they did accept trailers at one point in time, but then now as the city has grown, they don't uh, allow you to build any new trailer parks. So what that does is that makes trailer parks more valuable um, than before, because now you can't get them, right? So you don't destroy a park, you destroy the trailers, but you never destroy the park. So having control of the park is my goal, right? Like, could you imagine? He said there was 20 spots there. And even if half the trailers are bad, all right, let's say I've only got 10 trailers. Each trailer, I can rent it out for about $1,000 a month. That's $10,000 in income on a monthly basis on a trailer park. It's good money. So I'm going to give him a few minutes. Uh, he's probably calling his son now. Um, I'm gonna try to lock this up, man. If I could lock this up on air and mind you, I know he's in an area where not many wholesalers are targeting. So most of my wholesaler guys are targeting the city itself. Um, but outside of the city, they're not going out into some of these other areas, a little bit more rural. Uh, like this trailer park is not technically in the city limits. It's right outside the city limits. 
Um, I know guys aren't really targeting that and he was very hard to find. I could not find him. I found his sister and since she gave me his number, I know nobody has been contacting him. I've been sending him mail. I've been sending him all kinds of stuff and I have not had any response back from him. More than likely, both of those um, uh, addresses that I have for him in mail, they probably are not valid anymore because he has an Indiana address and that Indiana address is not on the GIS. It's nowhere to be found. And his son might be the alternate address that I have in here, but more than likely he doesn't live there either. Um, so that's, that's a positive for me too. These guys are harder to find. All right. These are not easy to find properties. You guys have already seen some of the legwork and remember I've been contacting him for a year. Th these are the ones that I don't give up on. Um, I've sent him at least 20 po postcards. I've skip traced him at least four or five times. I've already skip traced him twice just today. Um, and I had to find a sister to find the father and the father tells me now the son is in control of it. So now I'm gonna call the son. I'm gonna give him a few more minutes just to talk to his son and tell you how the rest of my day looks. This video is already turning out long, but I figure, you know, it'd be a great opportunity. My desk is a mess. You know, this is real life, you know, real estate investing. We don't make stuff, you know, look pretty because I don't know, man, we're busy. Um, I'm a busy guy. If you guys don't know by now, I close deals all the time, not because I'm just, you know, fanning myself and creating YouTube videos. I disappear from YouTube all the time because I'm hustling, right? I, I'm a hustler. Guys don't know this, but if you want to make money, you got to hustle. There's no get rich quick. There's no easy way to make money. Like, yeah, wholesale is the greatest barrier or the, the least barrier to entry to make money, right? I can make a hundred grand this month, but it's completely up to the effort that I do. Um, today, by the way, is March the 28th. So finishing out the first quarter, I'm gonna throw some numbers out there. I've only made a hundred and like 30 grand this quarter. Trash, man, that was freaking garbage. Um, Again, that's gross. That's not net. Uh, still got to include marketing costs. Still got to take out for um, what I paid my my employees. But I am one hundred and fifty thousand dollars behind on schedule of what I was supposed to make. So if this continues, which it's not, you know, I I, I have varying months all the time, and especially this quarter has had significant events that have like hindered the entire real estate market. People are in shock, people are not buying. Now all of a sudden I'm seeing an explosion of people selling and people buying. So new buyers that I never knew and old buyers are starting to come back out of the woodwork that I knew that stopped buying, um, they're coming back. So I'm gonna go ahead, it's been about five minutes and I'm gonna give this guy a call. I'm really excited because I wanna know what this guy is thinking and um, I'm gonna try to pitch a, a few different things here. So before I call him, these are some things that you gotta do before you call. When you're hunting special properties like this, you can't just be shooting stuff out of your butt, right? You gotta have a plan and you have to know what the plan is um, to really make something happen, right? So in my case, depending, depending how many trailers are still usable, how much work is needed, depending on how much, how many trailers are available, how much land, like there's so many variables in here, but we're going to take an example real quick and say that there's one trailer that's usable and we want to own or finance this thing. So we got to figure out what can we pay cash? What can we do as far as owner financing goes? All of these trailers are gonna need work. So I know for me to make profit, I need to at least pay $250 per month per trailer because I know that I'm gonna have to put money into it and I wanna make at least $1,000 a month per trailer. So at $250 a month times 12, right? Times 12, get that in there, times 12 equals 
let me see here. This is then this is an owner finance deal that I, I know that I'm gonna put together here. Equals three thousand dollars a year is what I'd pay him. Now I want to pay him over a 20-year period. So that means I could pay sixty thousand dollars per trailer. And I'm gonna add a down payment in there of a thousand dollars per trailer. So that means I could pay a total of sixty-one thousand dollars. So one thousand dollars down. What did I say? Uh, three hundred dollars. I think it was three hundred dollars. Sixty-one. God, I'm so terrible at this sometimes. Five by twelve. I think it was two, $200 times 12 times 20. Oh, what am I doing? I, I have it written down right here. I'm so retarded, right? 250. Okay, so $1,000 down, 250 a month for 20 years. It gives me $60,000 per trailer. So if I could pay $60,000 a trailer, okay, $60,000 a trailer, and I have 10 usable trailers, that means I can pay $600,000 for this park. All right, $600,000. Man, that's nice. So 600 Gs, if I have 10 usable, uh, usable trailers. Now, he told me there's 20 spots, right? So that means I can go on Facebook and probably find a really nice crappy looking trailer for about 11 grand that I can move over here and it's gonna cost me about five grand to move on each spot. So if I got 10 usable trailers with 10 spots that I could put 10 more trailers on, it makes it even more valuable, right? Now I'm not only adding value to the park, I'm adding value to my cash flow because I know if I can at least get $1,000 a month for each trailer, if it's a two bedroom or, or more, two bedroom trailer at 10, Trailers, that's $10,000. If I'm paying $250 a trailer per month, that's $2,500. So $10,000 minus the $250, or $2,500, I should say, that means I could cash flow $7,500 a month. And the revenue over a yearly period is $90,000 a year. All right. 90K a year just with 10 trailers if that's what is available. But the cash flow off of each trailer is going to be 750 bucks a month. Now, of course, that doesn't include repairs. That doesn't include any money we got to put into it. It doesn't include taxes. Doesn't include insurance. But at 750 bucks a month, even if I'm cash flowing $500 a month or $400 a month on a yearly basis, you know, that's going to that's going to add up, you know, it's going to make money over time and it's just going to continue to, to compound on itself at 90 K a year. That means in 10 years, I'll have 900 K. That means this park will pay for itself in about seven years. Perfect, man. That is money. That's gold. So now I'm gonna call this guy and see if uh, we can make something happen. All right. I already have the number dialed. I'm going to call him. It's been about 10 minutes. Hey Chris, how you doing, boss? I'm all right. Hey, um, I, I was just wondering, did your dad have a chance to give you a call? Uh, yeah, he said that somebody was going to call me about the uh, trailer park. Yeah, man. Uh, my, my name is Dan, by the way. Nice to meet you. All right, good to meet you. Hey, um, so I, I was just wondering what plans you had for that park. Uh, the plan was to uh, get it uh, back up and running. So. Totally understand that. Would you consider selling it at all? Um, I don't have much interest in selling it. I guess, uh, I, I mean, you're welcome to make an offer on it, but uh, I haven't been, I haven't tried to pursue selling. I know there's a lot, a lot of money to be made in it when it's, uh, when it's back up and running. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Do, do you have any of them rented out right now or no? No, nothing's Okay, um, let me ask you this. I mean, I could always make you a cash offer, but cash offer is always gonna be low just because 
I'm pretty sure they need some work and to get them up and running, but right. would you consider uh, selling them to me over a period of time? Cause I could pay a whole lot more if you could give me some time. How, how do you mean? So um, let's say we, we agree on a price. Um, instead of paying you all cash up front, I'd give you a down payment and pay you over time. That way you have money coming in monthly. You don't have any responsibilities whatsoever other than collecting a payment from me. Okay. Uh, it's possible. Uh, what do you have in mind? Uh, do you have a minute to answer a couple questions about the park? Yeah. How many of them do you think are saveable at this time? Um, my plan was to um, renovate at least four of them. Um, and I think, I can't remember if there are 10 or 12 down there right now. Uh, the plan was to save four of them and replace the others. <clears throat> but there are, I think, 19, 19 slots total. Is that area city city water and sewer or is it uh, well and septic? Well and septic. Okay. Do you know what the condition it's of the well is? It's a five inch well. It's five inch well, so it's gonna um I mean, it's it's functional for um for half the park, but it, it's not really it wouldn't be functional for the entire park for to have everything up and going. Okay, so like if you had renovated the ten trailers, you could probably uh supply water to those ten. Yeah, as long as you didn't have washer and dryer uh, hookups, uh, the the washer hookups are really what what uh, what kill the because that that increases the uh, pressure and the flow needs. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Hmm. But the plan was to uh, to do a new six inch well uh, to uh, to supplement or actually to make that the main, and then the uh, the old five inch well would be just for. Uh, Supplemental needs for what for any any other future use. Okay, how how many trailers are, are still standing there? Is there ten? There's at least ten. I think there's ten or twelve. I'm not certain. Ten or twelve. Uh, let's see. Three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11, 13, 17, 19, 20. All right, there are ten. <clears throat> there are currently ten in slot. And uh, there's one that uh, that's down there that hasn't been put in slot. Okay. How, how bad are they? Are they like just full guts or? Uh, they're they're gonna need full remodels. Yeah. Full remodel. Do you mind at all if I go down there and just take a look at them and walk the property? Yeah, I mind that. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I won't scrap any of the trailers. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't like having any, anybody down there. Uh, I totally understand. That's why I asked first. I didn't want to just pop up over I, there. I, I appreciate it, but, but um, I don't know. So my my idea, I, I kind of figure what I'm going to have to spend. I know that renovating each trailer is probably going to take about like 15, 20, give or take, and not including right. any, anything else in the park. Um, I could probably do, and this is, Please don't hold this to me. This is just an assumption on based on what I think I might have to do, but I could probably give you 600,000 over 20 years for what you currently have now. That would be $10,000 down, $2,500 a month, every month for the next 20 years. Probably not. Um, if you're talking about six hundred thousand total, then you know if we were to hold a mortgage on that at the current commercial rate of uh, what eight percent, then that would be basically getting two hundred thousand dollars for the property, and with a and, and then holding a mortgage. So that's not that wouldn't work, fellas. What do you think the, would uh, work? Uh, <laughs> a lot more than that. The the with the cap rates that the national buyers have been quoting me, uh, they're doing 10 cap. And with everything fully renovated, you're looking at 140 uh, NOI. 
so we're looking at 1.4 with it fully renovated. So there's no way I'm giving. It. I'm selling it for 200,000 and then holding a mortgage. Okay, I mean, I, I'm totally open to to knowing what you you would do. I mean, I can see if I can do it or not. I mean, that's that's the worst that could happen, right? Right. Um, I'm not really sure. Let me uh, let me put pen to paper and uh, and I'll give you. Uh, are you available tomorrow? I can talk to you. Yeah, man, you can call me anytime. Okay. I'll do that. Uh, I'll get put pen to paper and uh, and figure out where we would be and see if it's something that might work. Okay, that's completely understandable. All right. All right. You're in Stanley. Okay. All right. All right. That sounds good. Uh, I'll give you a call back tomorrow and, and we can discuss it further. Not a problem, Chris. Thank you so much for your time, my friend. All right. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. All right, bye. All right, so that went well. <laughs> Man, this this video is, is kind of long. Um, I'm, I'm going to cut it in a minute, but we're going to talk about this call. So this guy definitely, motivation is meh. So him saying that selling the park for 200000 actually, that's a good deal. Um, if all these parks... If the park fully renovated, fully occupied, would fetch $1.6 million, why hasn't he done it yet? You know, pen the paper says a lot, but action speaks louder than words, to be honest. This trailer park has been empty for a very long time. Very, 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 very long time. I know this because the street view shows from 2012 that it was still vacant. So here's what I'm guessing. He don't have the money or the time to go down there. His father even said it. His father bought the park for 50 Gs. So what that tells me is that he is really not ready. Oh, what is this? Hold on. Oh. He doesn't have the money, he doesn't have the time to really put in the work. And like he said about, you know, national rate and all this crap. Yeah, 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 that's all great and dandy, but it's not worth 1.6 million at, at its current moment in time. So even if we could get $100,000, I'm sorry, $1,000 a month per trailer that's currently there, not including the trailers that we'd have to buy, $1,000 a month for each trailer times 10 would be $10,000 a month times 12 would be 120 a year divided by 1.0 means that somebody would pay $1.2 million. So at $1.2 million, at, at fully fixed up, if he's saying that they'd pay 10%, $1.2 million, that's going to need a lot of money. Like, so he says it's going to take about $20,000 per trailer to renovate it. We got 10 trailers. That's 200 grand that I got to come up with. $200,000. Let me, let me write this down. $200,000. What, what am I going to get on a return of $200,000 invested? If that's what I got to pay, not including what I'm paying him monthly, because what I'm paying him monthly is 2,500 a month times 12. That's $30,000 a year. So, I gotta come up with 200 grand and 30 grand, not including the down payment of 10 grand. At 200 grand a year, if I'm making $120,000 a month, I mean $120,000 a year, no, it's actually 110, because it's 10,000 times 12, that's 120K. So 120K a year, I invested 200, that's a pretty good return if he was financing it to me. So actually now that I'm putting pen to paper and kind of thinking about it, I could actually, if I got to throw in 200K uh, divided by 0.15 is where I want to be. That means my all in would be $1.3 million. It's not bad. At least I got him talking, right? I know he won't take 600 over 20 years, but maybe he'll take a million over 20 years, right? What is a million over 20 years? So if we got a million dollar property, 
divided by 20 years divided by 12 means I'd be paying him $4,000 a month, $4,600 a month. That would still give me a decent return even though I got to invest $200,000 because if all I'm investing is a $200,000, then $200,000, um, I'd be making minus 4166. This is of course not including um, taxes or insurance. 5834 times 12. I'd make $70,000 a year after paying him off of a $200,000 investment. It's actually not bad when you think about it. So if you buy a single family house, you're gonna make about $500 for every $100,000 that you're all in on. So if you bought it, renovated, and you're all in at 100K and you're making $500 a month, that's good. But in this, that, that means I'm making what? Like almost, shoot, let me see. 70,000 divided by 12, I'm making $5,800 a month. But that still doesn't account for the well or the other stuff. Point is, I'm gonna get back to this guy tomorrow and I'm gonna try to record that video too. Point is, is that uh, we're gonna still try to make this work because this this might be a deal for me. I want this. Um, I got some money to spend and I need a trailer park. Trailer parks are great. They are long lasting investments. Um, because even if the, you know, the, the park itself, if they die, the trailers, not the people, the trailers, the trailers die off. That gives me still sp spaces to park new trailers. I could turn it into an RV park. There's 20 spaces there. That's pretty good. Um, RV park, you could usually rent those for about 40 bucks a day or $800 a month. So good money to be made here. Really good money to be made. But that's it for today, guys. This is a, a cool video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, somebody might be out there thinking that I'm crazy, dumb, whatever you guys might think. I do things no matter what, even if I don't know what I'm doing. I've never bought a trailer park. I bought trailers, but not a trailer park. So what he was talking about, he's a little bit more of a sophisticated investor, but we're still gonna try to make a deal happen out of here, even if we gotta put a large amount of money down. I do have some private investors that could really help me out and I'm just going to go for it if I can. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll catch you on another vlog.